Uh, John has not had the best records on stream so far, but he's definitely made a lot of fans. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, well, well, I'm sure he'd prefer to win. Uh, <laughs> certainly one of the more exciting players we've had on stream. You know, he's used a lot of unconventional strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a player that really likes to kind of use uh, combinations of Pokemon to do some strange tricks. Maybe. Uh, you know, I think the most common thing we see in the video game championships, especially in high-level play, is a lot of people like to be very safe. So you know, they use Pokemon that work in lots of different situations, mm -hmm. and that you know, kind of no matter what, you can't lose too hard. Uh, whereas John is very much a risk taker with his team. So he's got a lot of uh, tricks that are very reliant on like two or three combinations of Pokemon, and if mm -hmm. uh, you know, if something happens to uh, disrupt that, it can go down a little bit easier. But when it works, it looks really amazing. So it's yeah. a lot of fun to watch. It looks like there's nothing you can do against it. Right. And I think Gavin actually is a really fun player to watch as well. Uh, we've seen him on stream a few times as well. He was on stream at the uh, World Championships last year, I mm -hmm. believe, against uh, Arash Amadi, the mm -hmm. uh, reigning world champion at that point. Uh, he also played in the top eight of nationals. And I believe, unfortunately, he lost that match on stream uh, last year. But you know, Gavin, known as a very aggressive player, he uses, uh, you know, very aggressive player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, his teams might not uh, seem too much different than a normal player's, but uh, he's someone who really likes to make those aggressive reads to try to go for the big KOs, and uh, it should be fun. There's two players here who definitely play without fear, yeah. and I think that's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, these are going to be two very interesting styles to see go up against each other, too, because as you mentioned, John uses a lot of you know disruptive Pokemon, disruptive tactics. He really succeeds when he doesn't let his opponent get the ball rolling, when he doesn't get, let the snowball start going downhill. And Gavin really relies on snowballing early leads uh, to make sure that his opponent has, you know, even if Gavin makes a wrong play, his opponent's too far behind to come back from it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's sort of the fun of this matchup because I think it's very easy for either side to get thrown off here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, on John's end, uh, he has to worry about Gavin getting a quick KO, which, you know, with those hard reads, he's uh, more prone to do than most players. And, yep. you know, with losing a Pokemon early can make it much easier for John's teams to break down the normal team. However, with Gavin, you've got that aggressive team. You know, if uh, something like maybe a teeter dance interrupts the flow of his <laughs> offense, uh, it's easy to lose an important Pokemon and get behind early in the match and then uh, have trouble also. So these guys have to be very careful. Yeah, so we're going to hop right into our first game of the day. Remember, these are best of three matches. This is game one, round one of day. A2 Swiss here in Indianapolis will be looking at John's screen on the top and then Gavin will be at the bottom of your screen. So looking at the screens now, uh, John is running that Lopunny, that Azumarill, uh, that Gengar, Arcanine, Excadrill, and Togekiss that we saw yesterday. And Gavin is running a little bit more of a standard looking team, uh, Kangaskhan, Volcarona, Wash Rotom, Thunderous, Landorus, and Aegislash. Yeah, so uh, you know, on Gavin's side, uh, bit fewer tricks there. He's got two electric tech Pokemon, which is interesting. The combination of mm -hmm. Kangaskhan and Volcarona, which I really love. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of that. I don't think we've seen it on stream yet, but you know, Kangaskhan with a few mega Pokemon with Fake Out. Uh, Volcarona often has Quiver Dance, but could also have Rage Powder, so mm -hmm. uh, there's kind of some fun tricks between the two Pokemon there, and you know, people like to tunnel down the mega Pokemon sometimes, and allows uh, a powerful non-mega Pokemon to set up on occasion. Yeah, but speaking of powerful mega Pokemon, both Gengar and Lopunny on the field for John, as we saw yesterday. Uh, both of those Pokemon are capable of Mega Evolving, uh, putting some threat against Gavin. But of course, uh, when you're up against Pokemon like Gengar and Lopunny, you want to have a Pokemon like Thunderous on your side. If he's running that Taunt, Gavin's looking very good. Yeah, absolutely. It's sort of the same thing we saw Wolf try to do yesterday against the same lead, uh, leading that potential Taunt Thunderous and then a more defensive Pokemon, uh, Rotom, for Gavin instead of Amoongus like Wolf. And our first Excadrill, I believe, of the tournament out on the field as well, switching out in favor of that Lopunny. Uh, Realizes that Lopun is not going to get much done against Thunderous and Wash Rotom, and that Wash uh, Rotom and Thunderous have a pretty poor matchup against that Excadrill. Uh, Wash Rotom switching out for Landorus, and now it's just going to be a double switch for both players. John will Mega Evolve his Gengar, going to get that Shadow Tag on the field, making sure that his opponent cannot switch anymore, and also protect. So John playing the disruptive, playing the slow game, just trying to make sure that Gavin can't do what he wants to do here. Yeah, I think Gavin actually made a really great switch there, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Landorus coming in creates huge problems for Excadrill, though we did see yesterday this Excadrill as a Focus Sash, so a single Earthquake isn't going to deal with it, but uh, Gengar isn't going to be able to do too much with that Taunt coming in. Uh, Landorus' Earthquake, super effective on both Pokemon, really tough spot for John here. Great switch by Gavin. Yeah, great switch to get that Landorus in, and in favor of Excadrill, Arcanine on the field. The dogs are barking this morning, trying to wake everyone up. Intimidate against the Landorus and Thunderous, going to make sure that this Earthquake coming out isn't going to deal that much damage, but it's still going to be super effective on both Pokemon on John's side. So they're going to still take quite a bit, but thanks to that Intimidate, no KOs. Icy Wind 
Oh no, Landorus avoids the Icy Wind. And that's not how you want to start off your tournament with an Icy Wind miss against a Landorus. Only going to be able to deal damage and slow the Thunderous. And that's just going to pick up a KO on Gengar. And that's John's Mega out of the way real early. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that Landorus switch put on a lot of pressure there. Mm -hmm. uh, Gengar was going to seemingly go down no matter what. Uh, I don't think that Icy Wind would have knocked Landorus out anyway, but at least it would have been nice to get that damage traded. Would have uh, at least slowed it down. So. Yeah, absolutely, which is a big deal here, too. Uh, maybe extra could have been quicker than it. Uh, the way this played out instead, uh, Landorus still threatening to fire some super effective Earthquakes mm -hmm. off. Uh, Thunderous healing off a good chunk of that da damage. Landorus still at full health. Uh, you know, a Pokemon and a half down now for John. A really tough way to start out this game, but uh, Gavin played it smart. You know, he got Landorus in on that first turn, probably expecting something similar to what he got. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just tough for John. You know, he picked three ground weak Pokemon after that Gengar Mega Evolution and Lop Lopany, who just doesn't take damage very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he might want to rethink that one going into game two. Yeah, John was really hoping to catch out the non Landorus Pokemon so that uh, with that Mega Gengar, get rid of them so he could have an advantage going into it. But unfortunately, great switch by Gavin made sure that he has all of the momentum. Thunder Wave onto Arcanine, going to paralyze that Pokemon. John's extra drill will be able to get off a rock slide, deal some good damage against that Thunderous, uh, and a little bit onto the Wash Rotom. Will O Wisp will connect, also going to burn that, po uh, that Wash Rotom, deal a little bit of chip damage as well. Yeah, so not too bad there. I mean, at least Jack getting back <laughs> in the game, dealing some damage. Dealing some damage. Yeah, things Every improving. little bit helps. Yeah, uh, you know, Rotom getting burned will help uh, slowly whittle it down at least, but, you know, certainly would prefer to get that on a physically attacking Pokemon mm -hmm. like Landorus. Uh, but yeah, I guess we're kind of seeing some of the uh, weaknesses of John's team, and I think that's you know, some of what happens when you have this many tricks on it, right? You kind of lose sight of uh, you know, type co synergy because mm -hmm. it's not really the focus of the team. Yeah, also has to worry about more Intimidates coming in from that Landorus in the back. Uh, Wash Rotom protecting itself. Oh, great call. Trying to go for the drill run with that Mold Breaker, but Wash Rotom not going to take any damage because of that Protect. Hidden Power comes out from Thunderous onto Excadrill, doing a little bit of damage while it avoids a Will-O-Wisp. So, you know... Will-O-Wisp connect with the Wash Rotom, missed on the Thunderous. Yeah, I guess the John's Pokemon are kind of having a hard time waking up this morning as well. Yeah. I missed Will-O-Wisp and a missed Icy win already. A little unfortunate. Uh, we do see a cool trick there with Excadrill firing a drill run at the Rotom. Uh, if you didn't catch the ability activation messages, that might seem a little strange to you at home. Uh, <laughs> why is he attacking this fly or this uh, levitating Pokemon? I'm sure the flying tech Pokemon in the back, but mm -hmm. uh, Mold Breaker allows Excadrill to hit Rotom with ground type attacks. That's the main reason this sort of Excadrill is used. Mm -hmm. Lots of teams rely on that Rotom. Uh, pretty much if you don't have Thunderous, normally you have Rotom for uh, most players playing standard teams. So it uh, really struggles or makes those teams that rely on Rotom defensively to keep their uh, team intact and switch in as a pivot. Uh, troubles them a lot, but unfortunately Gavin is both Thunderous <laughs> and Rotom, which makes things a little bit trickier. Yeah, Thunderous, Rotom, and Landorus. So Landorus back out on the field, getting Intimidate off again, making sure that both this Arcanine and the Excadrill have, you know, negligible attack. Uh, Arcanine going to retreat as well, going to reset um, its attack, switching out in favor of Lopunny. Going to try and get some of that fake out pressure back on the field, try and grasp as much momentum as possible. But switching right into a taunt from the Thunderous, we saw Lopunny be an incredibly disruptive Pokemon yesterday, but with that taunt, nothing is going to be able to happen, and the drill run into now no longer levitating, but the flying Landorus. Yeah, Mold Breaker can't help you with that one. Nope. Uh, only ignores abilities, not the type chart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a great taunt on this Lopunny coming in there. And again, we're seeing Gavin just make excellent plays. Uh, you know, Landorus gets in safely, now threatening an Earthquake. Uh, Thunder is helping out its fellow uh, member of its trio there by breaking the uh, potential Focus Sash of Extra Drill, mm -hmm. which uh, if Gavin cleverly watched the stream yesterday, he would uh, <laughs> have seen. So a nice position now for him again. Well, John's going to use Fake Out onto the Landorus, make sure that Extra Drill is able to get off a Rock Slide this time around. May not be able to pick up the KO on the Thunderous, though. It's going to be close. Survives with 13 HP, thanks to those Intimidates from Landorus. Thunderbolt comes out onto Lopunny. Feeling not that much damage. Pretty bulky uh, Thunderous there. Uh, recovering off with those leftovers, making sure, you know, that Thunderous has been around for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. And it's probably going to stay around a little while longer. A Landorus should be free to attack this turn, you know, and a big Earthquake could uh, go a long way toward protecting its Thunderous friend there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when you know that in the back there's just another Arcanine. So, uh, type chart not working out for John today. Yeah, the you know frail Pokemon and three Pokemon weak to Earthquake strategy is a little vulnerable to the uh, most common Pokemon in the video <laughs> game championships here. 
Yeah, there's a reason why Landorus is used on pretty much every team, and uh, we're seeing it right now. Yeah, absolutely. Though, I mean, to John's credit, he picked up seven wins yesterday. I'm sure he faced more than a few Landorus there, mm -hmm. so he's definitely got his, some tricks up his sleeve for it. Yeah, in nine rounds, probably faced nine Landorus. <laughs> uh, Lopunny is going to switch out for the Arcanine, trying to make sure that that Excadrill can survive one more turn with Intimidate. We'll have to see if the damage goes the way that John wants it to. Of course, that Intimidate will weaken an Earthquake from the Landorus. Uh, Exodrill instead actually going to protect, trying to make sure that, uh, you know, it takes no damage at all. Another taunt comes in from Thunderous onto the Exodrill, and a superpower from Landorus onto Arcanine. Not going to be able to pick up the KO, and uh, the attack and defense fall there could be pretty big for John's uh, Exodrill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not quite the move I was expecting to see mm -hmm. from uh, Landorus there. We are trying to finish off that Lopini. Unfortunately, it catches Lion. another Intimidate and... Uh, just kind of annoys the dog a little bit. Yeah, the lion was real scared of that bunny, I guess. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes you've got to be. Right? <laughs> nobody wants to get teeter danced, but yeah. uh, unfortunately, Landorus fell for the bait a little bit there. Yeah, and because of that, it is forced to switch out. So Landorus switches out in favor of Rotom. So that burnt Rotom is back in. Oh, Arcanine is paralyzed, not going to be able to move. Uh, probably trying for uh, either a protect or maybe an extreme speed, something uh, like or that. Or helping hand. Or helping hand. Uh, taunt from the Thunderous onto the Exodrill, or sorry, onto the uh, uh, Arcanine, making sure that there will be no helping hands. Finally picks up a KO on that Thunderous with Rock Slide from Exodrill and dealing more damage to the Rotom, which will heal it off a little bit with Citrus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so Rotom going to take a little bit more burn damage now and uh, most likely going to see that Landorus come back in and get another Intimidate off onto Excadrill. Yeah, also safely getting in another chance to mm -hmm. uh, select the Earthquake button this time. <laughs> so Landorus really getting in great shape. But I uh, actually was pretty impressed by the way John's medal back in this game. I mean, Landorus still seems like it has this one under control, but uh, he did a lot of damage. Like, this game just started off so poorly for John, but uh, he's brought it back pretty close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, Gavin's Thunderous with that taunt. Probably the MVP of this. I think he, that Thunderous has taunted more than it's attacked in this game. Uh, just trying to disrupt the Disruptor now. So another Protect comes out from Excadrill as Earthquake from Landorus out on the field. Probably going to be able to pick up that Arcanine finally. So it's just going to be Lopunny and Excadrill. So a free switch in for Lopunny, another fake out pressure uh, turn. But again, that Excadrill has just taken so many Intimidates. You know, that's about the only Pokemon that can deal damage on John's side and it can't deal damage. Yeah, it's going to pretty much need some critical hits to get through those <laughs> Intimidates at this point. Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised to see a Teeter Dance coming out here at some mm -hmm. point. Uh, if Assuming Lopin will even be able to survive an attack to get it off, but I, I think that, that seems like the only real out for John here. He's going to have to uh, get that confusion going, and we've mm -hmm. seen him pull it off before, so maybe it'll happen. Yeah, you never know. Protect comes out from the Wash Rotom. Lopunny will go for the fake out onto Landorus. They're going to be able to deal some damage. Landorus flinching to the fake out. Iron Head from Excadrill. That could be big if he can get a critical hit. But unfortunately, too many intimidates. Excadrill just not able to deal the damage there. It's still a pretty good chunk of damage, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like an Iron Head would be very close to knocking out Landorus. So uh, not too bad of damage there. You know, a combination of a Teeter Dance, a Confusion <laughs> Self-Hit, and an Iron Head would knock out Landorus. And it looks like we are going to see Lopunny try and get a dance off. Protect from Excadrill. Earthquake again from Landorus. Not going to deal any damage to Excadrill, but will hit the Lopunny. Let's see how defensively that Lopunny is trained. Lopunny survives, gets the Teeter Dance off, and John is in the position he likes being, rolling the dice. <laughs> Yeah, Landorus is now confused, Wash Rotom is now confused, and Burnt, so it's taking damage every turn and potentially damaging itself. Hits itself in its own confusion, so it takes some damage and will now be taking the burn as well. Looks like Rotom only has one more turn left in it as well, and if John can get a lucky uh, uh, confusion hit off on that Landorus, he might be able to still take this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess it would be quite foolish to give it to him, and the nice advantage of Gavin's vision here is he's got a remaining Pokemon. So yep. Yeah, just get Landorus out of there, come back Earthquake <laughs> later, don't flip coins. Uh, this oh. is the right way to play the situation. Yeah, and having Kangaskhan in the back too, uh, you're in a pretty good position. But the Drain Punch from Lopunny going to deal a little bit of damage to Kangaskhan, but it's so bulky. Lopunny will be able to heal itself off just a little bit. And another Iron Head from Excadrill onto that Landorus slash Kangaskhan slot. Still not dealing enough damage and snaps out of its confusion. So Wash Rotom able to launch this Thunderbolt. Probably able to pick up the KO there. Yes, Lopunny will faint. So now Excadrill uh, just looking in trouble here. Going to pick up the KO on Rotom with that uh, with that burn. But another Intimidate coming in. Kangaskhan and Landorus up against a, a low eight. Uh, well, pretty healthy Excadrill, but still not in good position. 
John did do a really great job of clawing his way back into this game, though, which I think puts him in a pretty nice position for game two. Yeah, I don't think you can feel that bad about this loss if you're John. I mean, certainly mm -hmm. uh, the first couple turns can't go that way if John wants to win this series, yeah. but uh, he played the match itself well, and uh, I think a respectable game one loss there. Yeah. Especially considering he missed a couple of attacks early in the match, which also could have swung it a little, the game a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. you know, had that icy win from uh, Gengar hit Landorus, it would have fainted much earlier in the battle. Oh, yeah. Though I'm sure it would have changed the way the rest of the battle played out. Uh, so some definitely something for John.